Hi, hello, and welcome to my cross stitch floss tube channel. My name is Amanda May, and this is my channel, Artith Design, where we celebrate sustainability, counted cross stitch, and making all the things. <laughs> If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are just returning, thank you so much for coming back to spend a little time with me today. I live in Maryland, which is on the mid-Atlantic region of the United States on the East Coast. And it has been weather. I mean, am I right? <laughs> so we've had some pretty intense weather. There's been flooding and Thankfully, we're okay in my area, but I am filming in a different spot today where I could get the most light and talk to you all about my finishes. I have FFOs, which are fully finished objects, but they're models for my, so I don't know if I can count those, <laughs> um, but I do have uh, two finishes, two, three, I think I have four finishes to show you, so I'm pretty excited. I know it's been a while since I have shared my stitching because I have been all talking about like the needlework Emporium and Bethesda, the show I did last month. Thank you all for your kind comments about my video art booth walkthrough that I did. Uh, next video for Needlework Emporium when I do go and film. I will 100% make sure that I film before the start of the show versus my walkthrough that I did where I filmed after the show was already over. I learned a lot. That was my first ever in-person retail show. I learned a lot. And one of those things is to learn to ask for help. And I need to have someone there to help me so I can film and vend and do all the things. Okay, so... <laughs> uh, I'm so happy you're here. So I, I kind of don't know where to start. Should we start with finishes? We should start with finishes and I can show you my models and stuff in a little bit. I can show you my works in progress. So I started and finished some stuff that you've never seen me start or like it hasn't been in my whip pile, which whip stands for works in progress, things that I am working on. So this is like brand new, if I, <laughs> right? If you haven't been here for a while. Uh, so. Oh my gosh, I have so much stuff. So I brought this and it's full. And then I have stuff here. I'm gonna move my camera and show you like all over the show. I got a lot of stuff. Okay, I have, I worked on the freebie. It's called Molly. And I'm trying to find the pattern here to show you. So it is Molly and this is a freebie by Barbara Anna Designs. I got it off of her link tree, um, which is, you know, it has links to all of her free stuff and then her stuff for Creative Poppy and all that jazz. So this is Molly. She had a digital rendering of how she think, thought it should look. So I said, yes, I love it. So I chose the 32 count Riviera Aqua Linen by Wichelt, which I love all the Rivieras. I am currently stitching a model on the Riviera Coral, which is like a red. And then I did my other release, you know, in the olive, the Riviera Olive. So I like the Rivieras. So here is my finish. I am super duper happy with her. So I stitched this on a piece of nine by 13 piece of 32 count linen, nine inch by 13 inches. And then as you can see here, I cut, I think I left two inch margin and then cut the rest. And maybe I'll make like, I'll do like a little ornament or something later. So I love her so much. I love her little corn and I love the moon and stars. I love how whimsical she is. So that she's 65 wide by 95 stitches tall. And I'm seeing if I have any notes about like my conversions. So, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did switch this bottom piece. I did add here, I added pink instead of the brown. So I did the 3860 pink. And then for her chicken, like for her here, I used a brown, which is the, the Eliana. It's, it's a wool acrylic blend. It's a 12 weight thread, which I'm going to show you in a minute and something else. 
And so I, I tried it on that and I really liked how that looked. So I didn't, I used the brown so it's on her arms and right here on the pocket. Yeah, and her corn. I guess I used it a lot. I thought I just put it on her body, but no, I used it pretty much everywhere where that thread was called for. So I need to finish that. I'm really excited. Next finish I have is never underestimate the difference you make. I feel like I've shown you this finish, but let's just pretend that I haven't, okay? <laughs> so this is a finish and I love it. So I stitched this on a piece of the, the splash fabric. And it's out of this book here, Cross Stitch for the Earth. And it's 20 Designs by Emma Congdon. Emma Congdon, she just had a baby, so congratulations, a couple months ago. And so uh, she is overseas and she's got some just really lovely designs. She is very prolific. I remember when I wanted to start designing Cross Stitch, like she was the name, her and Satsuma Street, the um, Jody Rice. I just are really inspiring designer and Barbara and Anna. I mean, okay, everyone. <laughs> I love it. I love it all. I even like the spooky stuff. I mean, I don't stitch it because it. I don't, but I, I like the idea of it. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking to him. Okay, <laughs> so I finished the this one October first. I did write that down. And I think I used on the very last line here, I ended up switching the color so you can kind of see it's different to that color in cotton, one of the colors that came out of her box. So you can see it, that line is different, but I was doing like a thread conversion thing and it wasn't my favorite. And so I tried that and I like how it looks. So I have got to figure out if I'm going to frame that or yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I should do. But it's so bright and lovely. And again, never underestimate the difference you make. I did a review for the Australian magazine, the Gift of Stitching magazine. And in, in exchange for my review of her digital package, she gave me the digital package for free. That did not influence my review at all because it is so dang good. So it has like vintage prairie schoolers, vintage um, long dog, you know, long dog samplers. There's a Chatelaine. There's a bunch of really cool stuff. So I had pulled out last year. Um, oh, so Chris, here, I, I have notes. So Kristen Edwards, The Gift of Stitching ran between 2006 and 2012 published 72 issues focusing on cross stitch and counted thread embroidery. And each issue would feature a pattern from a well-known designer, a designer profile. There'd be an interview, an exclusive design. And there were a few columns on antique embroidery techniques, black work articles, competitions, pattern and tool reviews, and similar content um, in each issue. So she was selling the back issues and the yearly bundle. And then they also had the, the bundle of the 72 issues all the way. And the bundle included the Christmas issues. So I'm reading from a note that she had emailed me last year. So and she beautiful stitcher. Oh my gosh. So there's in the gift of stitching magazine, she did like the Santa with the beautiful coat and it's all in, it's all stitched. And then, oh my gosh, um, then this beautiful jacket, like the doll wearing the jacket. Amazing, amazing. Okay, well, I wanted to stitch this little Christmas goat. So cute. By um, Christmas Goat Ornament by Barbara Westhoven. It, the font is difficult. I, it's Hoven, not Haven. West, Westhoven. I stitched this on a piece of scrap fabric. And I just used DMC. I used several of the DMC colors that were for the pattern, the winter cardinal, not winter cardinal, for the cardinal pattern that Ryan Mack of Wild Violet Cross Stitch designed for the, it was on the cover of the magazine last year, the cardinals. Anyway, so this was like mostly her colors. So I left them on this 
specifically to stitch the goat. And I did. So, uh, here is a little goat. So what I did, I substituted, like I kind of swapped some colors. So where there was supposed to be 415, I did 414 and then I did 905 instead of 986. So I'm really happy. I believe, here's my back. I believe this is a piece of the R&R &R Reproductions fabric from, so I stitched comfort lighthouse on that blue and then when I cut it down to frame it this I think this was that scrap I decided to forego the year so I just stitched it here and again you can see this is green versus the blue and I don't know how I'm gonna finish her but it's so cute oh, it's so cute and I stitched it uh two strands of DMC over two linen threads and that's what we got there and then I stitched a prairie schooler. So this is also in the Gift of Stitching magazine. This one is from issue 46, November 2009. Oh, and let me tell you this issue. This one is from issue 47. So issue 46, issue 47, December 2009. So here is this and it's the little reindeer it says Christmas Eve deer so I pulled a scrap of my fabric that I dyed and I stitched this so I did a color conversion and you, this is unlike me see I didn't use the bright reds I, I tried something else I used purple and greens so let me grab I decided, so I did DMC 950, then I used the XJU. This was, I bought a three pack of silks that she had dyed for her Halloween collection. And I bought this on the kitchen kitten stitcher, as I drop everything, kitten stitcher website. So it came with like a purple and it came with the green and it came with another one other color so I decided to use my Halloween colors on my Christmas prairie schooler I know I'm wild wild and silly and I love it so here's that purple and it's it's really lovely but it's it's very muted so that's the XJU silks and then for the reindeer himself I used I bought uh one of her, the sets of bits like unmarked silks from Silks For You. She, her name is Jo, she's out of Australia. And so I used an unmarked skein of the brown for the reindeer. And then for in the snow, see those brown bits and stuff in the snow? I decided to use spotted white, which is a over dyed six strand cotton embroidery floss that is dyed by the old tattered flag. So I follow her and it looks like she just revamped her website and has a bunch of stuff up. Speaking of websites, I didn't plan this segue. Okay. I had a really hard time and I know several of you who tried to purchase stuff through Gumroad which was like an artist platform for you know selling electronic stuff like electronic cross stitch patterns PDFs they're amazing super user friendly super awesome but it, when it comes to selling physical items it, mm. I know several of you had a really hard time buying stuff so I ended up moving over to a new uh, website with a new e-commerce uh, platform where it accepts Square payment and PayPal payments, but it's not affiliated with Gumroad. It's through, um, so I'm being hosted by SiteGround and then it's uh, the website is, it's a Weebly site. So I know there's so many online platforms. There's Wix, there's GoDaddy, there's all this stuff. 
So I'm on a Weebly platform and I'm selling and I have been transitioning my website, transitioning all of my physical stuff from Gumroad over to my website. So hopefully you'll be able to order <laughs> more than one thing and like use PayPal and not have a problem. <laughs> so anyway, thank you all for your kindness and your support through this process. It's been um, definitely some growing pains on my end and I appreciate you for hanging with me. Oh, and if you came to my show at Needlework Emporium, I was running my square card reader. I was so nervous because this is my first event ever. I was literally physically shaking, trying to run my, run the credit card, like run cards. So bless all of you <laughs> who stuck it out with me while I was fumbling around. Okay. What else am I working on? Well, I decided to work on another pattern out of the gift of stitching and it is, oh my gosh, it's so cute. So I couldn't decide which colors to use. So I just kind of grabbed everything. So I bought the Christmas pack of the XJU colors from 2020. So there's Christmas colors in here. And then there's like some of the Barbara Anna colors. I mean, I just have a lot of colors in here and I was trying to find the perfect pink and I couldn't decide. And then I found the, and then, so this is my palette. I know what am I stitching with this palette? So I am using color and cotton Fiesta, which is awesome. This came in my thread of the month, but I had also, I've, I have used this in one of my patterns, the Spoob. Boo B Spring Bell Pole pattern for the B Well and Stitch that I did. This is charted for one of the bees uh, in the rainbow colors. So anyway, there's that. And uh, 3865 DMC. XJU, this is out of her Halloween. It's a cotton, it's marked Monday 9. I don't know what that translates to. Mint Swirl by... Uh, Nancy Turner, a Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. The same is Lime Essence and Arizona Sunset, which is one of my favorites. And then this green is Friday the 13th. <gasps> Love it. Okay, now I know for a fact this is R&R, &R, but I can't remember what it's called. So this is a bit of R&R &R fabric. This is as far as I've gotten, and it is the Christmas Santa. He's um, like a Santa ice cream cone, but I realized I left my pattern that I highlight and move everything with. I left it in the other room. So, but it's it's out of the gift of stitching magazine. I think it's so cute. I love it. So I'm outlined it in Fiesta, and then the inside is um, six 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 by DMC. The beard is white. Okay. My favorite white, like my favorite thing to do white stitches is still Sulky 1001 on a 32 count because I don't use two strands of white to stitch. I just use one strand. And I think they look so pretty. I feel like I really do a good job with my white stitches if I just use that 12 weight. I'm going to do a skin tone conversion on him. And then down here, it comes into a, like a little ice cream cone. And so I'm so excited. It's going to be so cute. I love it so much. So I'm, those are the Christmas things that I started. Uh, yeah. Exciting. I also have another start. I really enjoy the patterns by Birds of a Feather. And I know that I have seen them like rare out of print, OOP out of production or out of print. And I've seen them up, out on the secondary market, like eBay, Etsy, everything. I've also seen people, you know, carry the patterns like this one that I got. I bought this off of Fat Quarter Shop last year. So I'm not sure which patterns are in print and which ones are out of print. I don't know, uh, but this is Birds of a Feather. This is from several years ago. Um, this is HOL201 is the 
pattern number. I really like this. So I decided to start and I am using the bag that Stephanie of Lindy Stitches sent me. Look at those cute little. Ah. Okay. And I made a little thread sorter thing when I was doing my prototypes. I know, not the prettiest. But I used my fabric block and then a needle. So I've been just kind of laying my stuff in there so I can grab and stitch really quickly. I am stitching this on a piece of fabric that I got from when I won with uh, the pattern contest with Just Cross Stitch Magazine. So I am using it. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, but this is where I got. I got the B of Beware going and I got the eyes done. Well, I got one eye. I started working putting on the cat hair up here. But it's so much fun. So if I just want to sit and like stitch a bunch of the same color, there's the black. I can do that. So I'm really excited. I mean, it's obviously today is Halloween. I'm filming. It is Sunday, October 31st, 2021. I'm filming. So obviously not done by Halloween, but and excited. And, you know, it'll be done when it's done. I don't know. Uh, the colors that I'm using, uh, DMC uh, 310, so black 310, uh, 3866. I grabbed, for the orange, I grabbed from my um, Thread of the Month Club. That's carrot cake, and that orange is so fun. Then I grabbed banana pepper and ruby. And this and salamander, all of those are from the thread clubs. And then this was, um, I bought like a bits and bobs from her website a while ago. And that's what I'm using on the lining of the eye. So DMC and color and cotton. Love it. Love it, love it. So though that's really what I've been really stitching on like purse, um, personal, not model, professional stitching. Uh, so I wanted to show you another personal project that I've been working on and then I'll show you that model. Anyway, uh, excuse me, I'm all fumbling around. Okay, I stitched my very own project pouch. It is clearly handmade. I did not use a pattern. And I have Diana of It Is Kismet Stitches to thank for her sewing tips and advice on how to complete this project. So thank you, Diana. Uh, I got the fabric. It came out last year and it's bugs. And I thought it was so awesome. I bought just a half a yard. Uh, and this is my little project pouch I made. So I have the three three tiers here so I can either like roll up my um, skeins and set them in or I can use my bobbins so the wonderful thread which it's a company out of Canada but they're also located in New Zealand Australia England I want to say Italy, but it might not. Um, Canada, United States, New Zealand, Australia. Anyway, global company. <laughs> Their bobbins are larger than a typical bobbin. So I decided not to do the organizing the compartments here, but I'm really excited. So I had my threads custom machine bound on the bobbins. Uh, artdesign.com by wonderful um the canadian wonderful did that for me and so you get so it's a 20 yard spool card of the 12 weight Mar merino murano let's call the whole thing off. um you say tomato i say tomato wool and acrylic blend thread and I use that for my 
cardinal piece. She's been, he's, excuse me, he has been packed up since the show. So a little disheveled here. But this is all stitched in those wools, which the palette. And so, oh, so much fun. I got some trees down here. <laughs> but so I, I made the project pouch uh, as a prototype to see about how to hold these bobbins. And Diana had recommended how to sew so I can put like a six by nine chart under here. And then I used uh, sustainable stitching in action here. So this right here is the inside of like a, a sweatshirt, you know, that, that soft inside piece. Well, I got a piece that was all wonky that was given to me like from someone else's fabric stash that they weren't going to use. Well, I'm not going to like make a sweatshirt. I don't do that. So I cut up that bit because there wasn't a whole lot. I mean, I'm a big girl. I need a lot of fabric to make a sweatshirt. So anyway, I cut it up and put it here to, to, as a thread catcher, but, and then I made it so that I can put like my project over here and like the pattern over there and the thread catcher. And then I can attach, I did not put anything magnetic here. So like in case I put it somewhere, I don't want it to accidentally hit something. So I can use like a here, I can like attach my needle minder here if I need to, or put it under, you know, you know. My one thing, as you can see, it is handmade. I did not do this middle part very well, so it, it doesn't line up. But I was thinking I could do like a button and some ribbon so it can like wrap around. And I think it will look really cute for my first time ever making one of those. I think I did a pretty good job. Uh, <laughs> I want, let's see what's on top of my pile. Oh, I got some Happy Meal. So this is from Sally. Thank you, Sally. So she sent this to me a while ago and I have not been on camera to formally thank her. So thank you. She sent me some beautiful fabrics. Sunflowers, my favorite. I got a bouquet of sunflowers there. My husband surprised me with that because I have been work, 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 working. Um, so she sent me some gnomes and she sent me a lovely letter. So thank you so much. And look at this cute fabric. So I think I need to make another project pouch with that. We love gnomes in this house. Love them. So thank you so much. And the boutique, my favorite. I love this. All right. new release. I don't know if I showed or talked about this at all, but this was one of my little releases for Needlework Emporium. And he's a little turkey. It's the little turkey. I made him uh, two different pieces. So you could, if you wanted to, attach him to the back of this and make him like a little shelf sitter and he could sit right up, or you can lean him up against something, or however you wanna do it. So I used, I dyed my own fabric. It is a 14 count uh, Ada, and then you use a piece of felt on the bottom, and then you do his little legs and the beads. I, oh my okay. <laughs> And he's charted all in DMC. And he's got two different sides. So he's got a front and a back. And so I have the complete directions on how to make him uh, within the pattern. And then I have the set. So I, it has everything but the fiber filling and the thread. So you get the beads, the felt, the fabric, the directions, and the pattern. So that's the little turkey. And I love his little legs. Uh, he just dove. You okay, buddy? You okay? Okay, he's okay. With those little dangles. So that's the little turkey. And then I dyed fabric for 
Little Miss Mary Magic and I have her for sale on my site. She was offered as a complimentary chart to my newsletter subscribers, um, but now she's available to purchase um, with the fabric or without, and she's charted all in DMC. So this is Little Miss Mary Magic. And then I showed you um, last in face-to-face -face that I, the third in the Chesapeake Bay Sampler series coming out was the Island Ponies. So I just wanted to show that this is the kit, what the kit looks like. It comes with the brown silks, the fabric, the charm. It comes with the, the leaf that goes um, around the perimeter if you were to make a pillow and this and the pattern itself. So that's this, that's the third in the series. And you all have been so lovely about this series. Thank you so much. Someone asked me if I will be having a terrapin excuse me, the turtle in a future one. Maybe. So yeah, maybe. Oh, and then if you get, if you want this, um, cardinal here, I do have, I'm selling it on my site. I already told you I revamped stuff and in it, you get the thread pack. So I'm, you get the thread pack and the needle. You get Needle Companion, which Needle Minder shows super glitzy glam, and it's with the Neodymium, the Rare Earth Magnet. I uh, created the packaging, and it's based, it's from a book, it's a um, 15th century Italian lace embroidery, a special like Venetian style, and it's a block print. So that's what the packaging is of, isn't that neat? And then the chart and you get the fabric. So that is the Wichelt Riviera olive fabric. So you get a nine by 13 piece of that. So you have the fabric, the threads, the needle, your needle minder, ready to start. So yay. I have had a lot of people ask me about the threads and how to use them. So I will be making a tutorial video and posting it here on my channel. So stay tuned for that. Awesome. Okay. Oh my gosh. I don't even, I haven't even gone through half of this and we're over 33 minutes. Should we talk a little bit more? Okay. Uh, I want to show you some of my thrift store finds um, because I cannot help myself. And we'll just say that. Good news though, like I go in and yes, I want to look at crafts at the thrift store. I got my mask on, but I, I'm looking for like clothes for my kids and stuff like play clothes and things and toys and all that stuff. So it's not just about me, right? Okay, so I found this little felt stitchery uh, vintage kit for felt uh, that it just looked like fun and it's from 1985. So I thought, why not? The little quilt collection. Little quilts. I grabbed this. It was not 50 cents, but it looks like maybe someone had the yard sale and then it just got donated. So this is cup of tea bookmark and it's a kit and it looked super fun. I have never done anything. This is bead weaving with a peyote stitch threaded needle designs. So I picked it up. It comes with the beads and everything. So I would need to learn how to do that. I got the beaded loomed jewelry petite purse necklace. This was put out in 1994 by Mill Hill and um, I'm, don't necessarily know if I'll make it, but I, that thread, I wanna try out the thread. So I got that. This is super cool. So I need to investigate this further. So I did pay 50 cents for this and I am loving it. So it came with the fabric. So I've gotta figure out, it's a, Chart is a true reproduction of an original hand painted design and is adapted to cross stitch. Okay, cool. So this is, it came out in 1990. 
Berlin needlework pattern. A true reproduction of original hand painted design. About 1804, a print seller in Berlin named Philipson published the first colored design on checkered paper for needlework. In 1810, Frau Wyck, an accomplished needlewoman and artist, saw the possibilities of extending the sale of needlework pattern to Victorian ladies. Frau pursued, persuaded her husband, a leading publisher of patterns, to pursue her idea with great enthusiasm. Many of the designs were imported from Germany by Mr. Wilkes of Regent Street, London, along with the best designs from France and Italy. As many as 1,200 women were employed by the leading manufacturers to color these patterns by hand. Needlewomen of the day would work the Berlin patterns by matching the color of the pattern to the wool colors of their canvas. How cool is that? Okay. Oh my gosh. Look at this real time thing. So um, it's got the chart. Uh, 143 by 170. It's a slipper chart. I thought it. Oh my gosh, so it's for the top of your foot, your slippers. Holy moly, that's cool. Okay, so this was produced here by Thumb Lands, 1990. I'll have to do some more research on that. I got it, I got it because I saw the fabric. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Um, a kit, it's never been used. Victorian needlework chart. And it gives you the colors. So 50 cents, yes please, to make a reproduction 19th century slippers. They'd be so pretty. I wouldn't want to put them on my feet. Last year I helped Sulky of America. I consulted with them and I helped, um, I developed the pattern for embroidery and cross stitch for the espadrilles webinar that they did. Um, so I helped chart that full cross stitch for the shoe for the espadrilles. And I told, El I taught Ellen March like how to cross stitch. And she said she worked so long on them. I'm like, yeah, they're so beautiful. I, you don't even want to put them on your feet. And she's like, yeah, they're under glass now. <laughs> like, I believe it. You hand stitched those shoes. I wouldn't want to wear them. <laughs> anyway. So I got that and then I'm so excited about this. I could not believe I got this. This is Butterfly Garden Sampler. And it's it's super cute and muted. It's Victoria Sampler um, 2001 by Thea Duke. Try not to show the pattern. I'm just trying to show her information. Um, so it's got, it, but it came with, look at that. Right? So it came with the Silk in Colors Floss Butterfly Garden. Silk braid, silk thread, the Overa Soie. Now see, I've never tried Overa Soie. I get to try it now. So I'm super stoked about that. I have been waiting to, sh to try it until I showed all of you with a goodie box. I picked this up and it is a design and it's all blue, like blue roses. And it's, it looks like it's a 16 count blue Ada. It's got all the DMC, I believe. I need to research this a little more. Uh, it's an award winner. Oh, here, let me pull out the, oh, it's all hand charted. It looks like in the, in the book. Yeah, it's all hand charted. Um, it says it is the Woodlawn Shows award winner, first place in the professional original cross stitch design category. So that's pretty neat. Uh, if you follow uh, Stitching in Color, she did that really awesome adaptation um, where she did it with Black Lives Matter. I watched her. Her discussion over the summer she did with the Woodlawn, um, you know, talking about cross stitch and 
having it be more representative in its message and um, in the designers who represent the craft. So that was really awesome. So anyways, uh, Stitching in Color, I follow her on Instagram. I'll link her below as well. So oh, very cool. And then I got a couple other embroidery stuff. This is a vintage uh, creative needle craft. I just thought it was really cool. So it's, it's crawl embroidery. Look at that, isn't that neat looking? That looks like something Jody Rice of Satsuma Street would make, right? And then I got more patterns and stuff. I, I know, I can't, I'm not, I, what is it? Stash beyond life expectancy. Stash acquired beyond life expectancy. So this pattern, it's got the orcas. I got it, it's Circle of the Sea, um, Cross Heart Ink. I put a whale on it. I just love whales. This is Nutcracker Sweet. I, this is a gnome. I just thought he was really neat. This is Donna Gallagher, Creative Needle Arts. Heartstrings, Santa Times 3. Now this I thought was really neat. What I liked about this chart, so it's it shows you how to stitch it on perforated paper with the joints, which I think I thought was really cool. How to make the doll or how to do it with the specialty stitches and frame it. Angels and Flower Gardens stocking. I like that with the trimming the tree. Santa Claus plate. I mean, it just came with the set. Stony Creek, best of Stony Creek stockings. And it, this reminded me of the stocking. I want to say that Amy of Amy Loves Toads stitched this last year or the year before with the woodland animals for, for, I want to say that's where I've seen that one before. So I saw this pattern book. I'm like, yes, need to get that. So this is book 387, the Stony Creek collection. I'm not sure if it's in print still. Far Eastern Floral. So this reminded me, so I Yeah, they were, I think it's awesome. <laughs> That's all I need to say about that. I got Zodiac Signs Embroidery. Like this is so cool. I should, it, this has got significant, like some water damage and stuff, but it's got the, um, it's got it, it's, it's done in cross stitch as well as the embroidery transfer. But the pictures aren't very good and it's, it's water damaged but it's really, um, it's from the seventies, I think. Okay. The Alma Lane, the angels monthly that just came in the set. I, and then this one was really interesting. America's goat man. And he's, he's a man, he's literally holding the goats. I have never seen that before. And there's a whole story about America's goat man. Favorite subjects, space, rockets, yes please, sci-fi, comedy, tragedy, all the things, but rockets, and country ABCs, patriotic and cute. All right, that's what I got to show you all this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, family update, Loki Apple had his mouth surgery and they had to remove a tumor in some of his teeth. They sent everything off to be tested. So he is still recovering. He's actually downstairs with my family. As we speak, I tried to get a little bit of filming of him. He is playing and getting back to his adorable self. Yes. Good, good pugs. Yeah. So, Thank you all for your well wishes on him. Uh, Luna Moon is doing great. The kids are great. I took them to a outdoor trunk or treating event and they had a blast. My son went as Lego Batman and my daughter went as Rainbow Unicorn. I would expect nothing less from her uh, because my puppy, uh, Loki Pug, is still not feeling well. We are not doing any trick or treating today, Halloween day. So, Thank you so much for joining me, uh, sending lots of love to you, and 
hopefully I'll be back soon to talk more about County Cross Stitch. Yay! Okay. I gotta go. <laughs> okay, love you. Bye.